Hey everybody, Martin Quad Spinner here, and today we'll be focusing on two nodes that have recently gotten some fancy new improvements, the Thermal Shaper and the Shaper node. These two nodes are probably less used than some of the major ones discussed previously because they aren't designed to give you end results, but are actually there to help you lock in the base shape that you will be working with. We'll start with the Shaper node. It has quite a simple effect on the shape of your mountain, it can basically turn a linear rising slope into one that rises exponentially or logarithmically. So for the sake of an example here that's very simple, I got a cone that is just a linear rising slope and we can use the shaper to then make it logarithmic or bulky or we'll make it more exponential or more pointy. So those would be the simple terms I would say. It either makes your mountain more bulky or pointy. Now the node has gotten some improvements on the actual level of control you get with these two settings right here, local effect and maintain fine details. What we can see here is that when we have this local area, it finds the actual peak or these sharp areas and then actually applies the shaper to that area. Now we can here, using this, we can actually select the size of the local area. So you can see how this little peak has become a little bigger or it becomes a little smaller. The detail size is not really noticeable here as we don't really have a lot of details um, to maintain. But when we actually take a mountain range, we'll be able to see a bit more. So what I think Shaper and also Thermal Shaper is good at is reining in a lot of the extreme shapes that these primitives, uh, noise primitives can give you. So we can use the actual Shaper to kind of rein in the, uh, the whole shape and make it a bit more usable. So here we're actually just bulking up by 0.4. Um, we're not using any of the local or maintain fine detail effects. And you can see it just bulks up the whole terrain. Those peaks become a lot more rounded out and we get a lot more kind of like a fill in the body of the mountain. So you can see here, for example, it's a very steep pointy peak. And now it's just a lot more of this like full bulky terrain. Now, when we enable the local effect setting, we'll see that a lot of that bulk in the center areas is going down again, and we actually do maintain the peaks, uh, and we're just affecting the peaks like width and like bulkiness rather than the whole terrain. And when we do detail size, you'll see that we actually maintain a lot of that cool, rocky sharpness on top of these peaks. So you can see that those don't change, but the actual overall terrain does get more bulky. Now let's head over to the Thermal Shaper. I personally believe that the Thermal Shaper is probably going to be used a bit more as it can give you very cool results now with the new improvements. So we're just going to run down all the different types of settings and uh, go with it. So we got this mountain range here and we're going to throw on the Thermal Shaper. Now it is kind of an effect uh, similar to Thermal Erosion. However, it is more of a filter rather than a real simulation. So here with the influence, we can actually control the strength. The shape is actually similar to the shape control where it can bulk or slim down your mountain. And then we have two new options on this new node, which are scale and micro detail preservation, which we'll get into later. So we see here that with an influence of 0.75 and a slight slimming down of the shape here, uh, we get these cool, awesome, like triangular peaks that we kind of know and love from thermal erosion. So you can really see how it's affecting our terrain. And this is where I mean that this node could actually be very useful for a lot of people, um, especially with this micro detail preservation. We can actually create very cool shapes while at the same time maintaining all that cool detail from the you know primitive underneath. Here's the opposite, but bulked up. So you can see this also is very useful for creating maybe rolling hills or that kind of, you know, very soft looking terrain. And here we're actually going to turn up the scale. So when we turn up the scale, we'll actually see that the, um, the thermal kind of gets applied at a bigger level. So when we turn down the scale again, um, the thermal is kind of sharpening individual ridges. And then when we turn up the scale to a higher and higher amount, it starts not focusing on these individual ridges as much as it just starts, you know, thermal eroding these whole mountain ranges down. So that's kind of what scale is. It is focusing on the larger um, actual shapes and now it's focusing on these smaller shapes. So you can see 
I personally think that this setting alone is making such a massive difference. Um, the thermal shaper is now absolutely a powerhouse in creating cool mountain shapes. I mean, this is straight up just a primitive and the thermal shaper, and we are already gone like very useful, almost usable results pretty much. Uh, I would say they're usable. I would say you don't have to change too much to this terrain to already create a pretty realistic render. Now let's go and turn up the micro detail preservation. So you can see all those rocky details from the primitive, which are here, uh, become visible again. Basically just, it's a, it's very interesting. I, I, I couldn't tell you exactly the math behind it, but it's almost like there's like a sort of high pass that gets maintained by using this micro detail preservation. So all the little tiny shapes uh, stay in there. If we turn that off completely, of course, it becomes very smooth and still pretty cool. Then we have the actual intensity input right here, which is pretty much just a mask. Um, it could actually be useful for mountains that have a lot of cliff detail. You want to kind of add some thermal you know, shaping. However, you want to maintain the cliff detail. Now, in my case, I took this like slope map. So let me just create this under layer here. So I'm basically saying these slopes shouldn't be affected. Of course, the slopes on this terrain are kind of ridiculous. So you get this huge uh, peak that may, like doesn't get changed. So you can see right here, everything becomes kind of thermal eroded. However, this area right here, this area um, does not. So you get this huge peak sticking out of the terrain. Not very realistic, but for actual mountains with like nice cliff detail and you just want to add a little bit of thermal erosion, this intensity input right here can really help you um, get nice results. Uh, because if we mask it simply, uh, you'll see that, you know, it doesn't mask very nicely. Putting it into the intensity, however, does work very nicely and it blends smoothly between the two like areas in a sense. So for this example, I'm just going to create something that I was inspired by Banff National Park. Um, it's these really bulky mountains over there and it's, uh, it's really cool. It's part of the Rockies and um, yeah, Shaper is going to kind of help me set up my base shape here before adding erosion and coloring. So at first I'm using a shaper to bulk up the mountain a bit, using local effect to kind of rein in those pointy details on top. Then I'm using the thermal shaper to further wither down the mountain into more of a bulky shape. As you can see here, we're kind of withering down a lot of that foranoid that's mixed into that primitive. I'm making sure we don't have like huge cliff faces like here. Now I'm going to add my erosion. I'm going to add some cliff detailing with sandstone and warp. Just going to add that on top on the slope mask. Should probably do this. There you go. Um, then we're going to add another erosion, this set to max. Um, this will fill in the gullies with debris, as you can see here. Then we're going to add a rivers, which will add some cool river detail running down the mountain. Super cool. And finally, we're here to actually texture this thing. So very quickly, just going to have my rock and grass texture situated. Going to have dusting as my main snow. And add that all together here with some uh, actual greenery added via trees, which I'm kind of liking to do now. Just get a tree output, get the mask, warp it a bit, and then use that as your uh, green that you stick on the mountain. And then we have our color. We can also add our snow. And here I'm going to actually make this the underlay. Voila. It's really easy to work with the shaper and thermal shaper nodes now and get like super quick, like adjustments to your base shape. If I wanted to make this mountain a bit more, let's say pointy and a little less bulky, I could just go back and just change the shaper. Um, and then I would have that effect instantly. It's just, um, very fun to see how these nodes that are, you know, meant to really help you in the beginning, uh, get that base, like the base shape situated. It's really fun to see those nodes now get some more control and you can actually control very specific points and like the micro detail and stuff that you maintain. So definitely go check out the shaper node and the thermal shaper node on Gaia 2.203 guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it was helpful and let us know in the comments what you'd like to see next.